Um, thank you for inviting me here today um, to, to kick off and to, to get some extra energy in this room. Can I ask everyone to stand up? Okay. Can I ask you to remain standing if you've started a business? Okay, so we've got a, a large number of entrepreneurs. Um, if your business has, is over a million pounds in turnover, is over five million in turnover, over 10, over 50, we've got one man standing, Anthony. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, I, guess, I guess the point of that is, is to really bring home the point that in the UK, we're incredible at starting businesses. I mean, at a guess, there was 25 plus minus people who stood up in terms of people who've started businesses. And, you know, one which, two which are over 10 million, one which is over, over 50 million in terms of revenue. What the UK is not great at is scaling businesses. And that's what I would like to speak, to, uh, speak about today. It's really the outsized impact of scaling businesses in a country, the barriers, and in a way, the benefits of removing those barriers and the benefits which scaling businesses actually provide to, to communities. As, as an entrepreneur and a capitalist, I, I have my father to thank for, for I guess, my entrepreneurial spirit. Um, he was an entrepreneur, got knocked back many, many, many times. And that resilience and the, the ability to drive through things um, and adversities to really, really play out your vision. Again, Antti, you mentioned this in terms of like the challenges, for example, in the fintech space at the moment. They're incredible companies in the fintech space, but being able to continue through the adversities of down sort of bad, bad periods, winters, etc., is just so important to be able to be successful. The first business I co-founded with my uh, co-founder, Joel Perlman, um, was Copal Partners. We took that from zero to 3,000 people over 12 years. We used a total of 40,000 pounds to build that business. Um, but we also experienced doing that, just how bad commercial banks actually were in terms of supporting businesses. And that's really what drove us to think about setting up our next business. So when we sold that business to Moody's, um, we decided to set up our second business, Oak North. So in 2015, we got the third new banking license in 150 years here in the UK. Um, over the last eight and a half years, we've lent over 10 billion pounds um, in the UK, predominantly, um, which has helped create about 40, 47,000 new jobs and about 29,000 new homes, most of which are affordable social homes. Our view is that that's pretty outsized impact for a business which has been around eight years. And how have we done that? We've done that by really supporting other scale-up businesses, businesses which are generally between a million and a hundred million in revenue, which end up being the most productive part of an economy, the ones which actually drive economic growth, GDP growth, employment growth in a, in a totally outsized manner. The UK is known as a nation of shopkeepers. And I think if you, if you take from that, at least what I take from that is a nation of people who are great at starting small businesses, who work incredibly hard, and generally have a pretty localized view of the impact that their business will have. If you take that localized view and you extrapolate it out to having a view on having an impact on a region, on the nation, and then internationally, I think that is, the, that is at least how we think about scaling businesses and the ability to actually create businesses which have outsized impact on a much, much, much broader playing field. Specifically, SMEs are 99.9% .9 of all companies by number of companies um, in the UK. They're absolutely the backbone of, of, of the UK economy, but most economies as well. However, most SMEs are micro-businesses. There's nothing, again, wrong with micro-businesses. They are a critical part of, of our economy, but they generally employ a handful of people, two, three, four, five people, if that, and turn over tens of thousands or 100, 200,000. The impact that those have in terms of actually helping grow an economy is nowhere near what a scale-up business has. Last year, we 
commissioned the Social Market Foundation to actually do more research in terms of what are the barriers in the UK which exist to actually us creating more scale-up businesses, actually, actually going all the way, and also identifying why scale-up businesses are actually important. What we identified is that out of all SMEs, scale-up businesses constitute about 1% of the total number of companies, about 8% of total SME employment, but critically 22% of SME turnover. And if you just think about that, 1% of SMEs, 22% of turnover, shows how much impact these businesses actually have, and contributing about half a trillion pounds to the economy. And that's very similar in, again, other, other markets, other geographies, including the US. If you were to think now about taking that 1% and being able, through improving the environment for scale-ups, to double that, doubling the 1% to 2% of companies in the scale-up category, getting your 22% of SME turnover to 44%, that is totally outsized. And that's what I think we should have ambition for as, as a country. The UK ranks as the third best place to start a business, the fourth most attractive place to actually raise capital for a business, but the 13th most, um, most supportive uh, place to actually scale a business. Over the last years, decade, two decades, we've been incredible in becoming world known in certain, in certain segments from performing arts, therapeutic healthcare, life sciences, fintech, hospitality, and others. So we do lead in terms of reputation in certain areas. And our view and, and the view of the Social Market Foundation report was that actually with some, with some interventions, we can create an even more attractive environment. I'm going to ask the question now, why, why does this matter specifically now? I mean, this, this dynamic has always existed. I think, at least for us, the, the big change is that you've got so much more of an environment where winner takes most in a market. The dominant players really dominate categories. If we think about how our lives are impacted by big tech and how much of our lives we actually spend, in a way, around the products which a handful of companies produce. If we think about high streets that we walk down, our local high streets or high streets around here, they're sort of becoming more and more homogenous as larger groups, larger chains are actually, in a way, sort of standardizing, standardizing the experience. And our view is that that doesn't create for a delightful environment, it doesn't create the type of diversity which, which in our view, sort of excites, excites people and also critically stifles innovation because you end up with this barbell economy where you have very large companies, you have micro companies, and you have very low businesses which are able to transition from those micro businesses all the way through. Now you could ask, okay, if you're helping scale companies, ultimately you want them to become large companies, which is absolutely true, but ultimately that process of continuing having businesses in that scale-up funnel, in our view, drives innovation. And I think this is probably more, more true with the advent of obviously Gen AI, where you've got the ability to totally reinvent business models. And again, the technology is still, is still early, but the pace of, the pace of development is obviously um, pr pretty incredible. A lot of incumbent businesses will always find it hard, number one, just to innovate, right, for, for the Museum of Technology point. Um, but also, they'll find it incredibly hard to actually cannibalize their businesses by flipping around their business model, um, driven, driven by just a, a different way to actually deliver, deliver propositions to, to customers. So you put that together, that's why we believe this matters, this matters more today than it has before. In terms of some of the recommendations which, um, which, which we identified, the, the key areas or the key barriers to, to actually scaling, talent came right, almost right at the top, capital and education. And if we think about talent, what's incredible about the UK, I mean, we're sitting here at a university, I met my co-founder at a university, 
I think we have, um, we have incredibly strong academic institutions across the country. However, the technical talent takes you so far. Company building talent, the, the muscle of how you take a business from 5 million, 10 million, to 50 million, to 500 million, to a billion, to 2 billion in revenue, that muscle is a muscle which I would say we just don't have a lot of practice at as, as a country. And therefore, we need to make the UK as the most attractive place to come for scale-up entrepreneurs or scale-up managers who've actually gone through that scaling experience in other countries to say, actually, I want to come to the UK and do that. Access to capital, always, always a challenge. Yes, identified as the UK is identified as the fourth best place, but that doesn't mean that it's easy. And education, how do you create an educational environment which supports all of that? So the recommendations which came out of the, um, the work we did was really thinking about where the UK absolutely leads. For example, the examples we gave, life sciences, fintech, therapeutical health, uh, performing arts, hospitality, et cetera. And actually saying, as a country, we need to decide which of those we really want to back. How do we create clusters around those, clusters which then we can actually feed educational institutions around and actually increase the amount of funding which goes into those educational institutions to actually support those activities? How can we actually create an environment where you take the tax incentives which already exist around R&D tax credits, SEIS, EIS, and actually focus that in on a much more focused spend um, opposed to this very, very wide spend of, of billions across, across the economy into those segments and therefore create an environment where if you are an entrepreneur or you have gone through a scaling experience and you want to go and find your next gig, you sort of say, if I'm in the life sciences space, I have to come to the UK or I have to look at the UK and we start importing more of that talent to actually help us grow businesses. So with that, I'll conclude by saying our views are much more than business success. It's really around how do we create an environment which ultimately leads to a world which is just more joyful to live in, where you have more innovation and more diversity. With that, thank you.